Hello everyone, this is Krodek giving you Game 3 in a best of 3 series between Mouse Sports' Mana and TT1, Fnatic's TT1 here on Crevas. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. It looks like crevice to me, um, but then someone's like, no, 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 it's crevas. It's, um, I don't know why they didn't give me a reason for it, but I always want to try to pronounce things correctly, so crevas it is. We have TT1 spawning on the top left-hand side of the map as the green Protoss. Meanwhile, Mouse Mana, not Nova, spawning as the yellow Protoss player. For those of you guys who are watching this on YouTube, you can see that it says Mana here. But those of you guys watching the live stream, you guys don't see my overlay. Anyways, um, we'll see what's going to be happening in this particular matchup. Crevas is a pretty interesting map in that you have a very well-protected high ground expansion here that also has... Oh, this only has the normal Vespine Geyser. All right, so some things that I need to keep track of. This particular map only has a normal Vespine Geyser as opposed to rich Vespine Geysers. Rich Vespine Geysers return six per trip instead of four. And it really only makes a difference for early Zerg as Zerg are able to put up a hatchery here and then use this extractor as opposed to an extractor here to get a higher gas rate early in the game and then getting those metabolic boosted lings out earlier. Anyways, so far TT1 and Mana pretty much building the same exact build order. Mana now going to make his way over here and, and now just dancing around the side over here. And there are sets of destructible rocks as well with a very, very large wide opening center. Not quite sure if TT1 saw the probe of Mana. It doesn't look like it as he didn't change direction. And now this probe will be making its way up that ramp. And Krevas also has another set of destructible rocks over here on the front door. So I believe four gating is a definite, definite possibility. Just because if you're able to block off one force field to, and what, use one force field to try to block off your ramp, all your opponent has to do is just use the stalkers that he has nearby and start destroying the second set of destructible debris. The destructible debris also only has one armor instead of your typical three. And on top of that, only has a thousand hit points as to your typical 2000. So that is much, much easier to take down. You can already see now Mana semi hiding a pylon over here. And this is very interesting. Another thing that Mana could do is he could try to go for Stargates after that Cyber Next Core. I don't see a second gas though yet. So it is going to be a little bit of time as a Zealot now makes its way down. Perhaps a Chrono boosted Stalker. We should be able to intercept this probe before that probe makes it up into that location there and be able to and um, be force TT1 to be essentially playing in the dark. The probe still wandering around back and forth. We are getting another gateway production wise, and I don't see anything too out of the ordinary. We only see one gateway so far, so perhaps um, Mana is trying to save up for um for um, a Nexus coming in sometime soon. That probe now going to be able to make it up that ramp just a little bit. You can see now getting some damage in. One more round of attack and he doesn't get a good enough view inside the base to figure out what his opponent is going for. Back over here, we are seeing some sentries and zealots making their way into play as TT1 playing a little bit more defensively, getting an additional gateway as we are getting gateways here as well. So you can see Mana also being... Um, aware of this front door rocks and not wanting to or wanting to be able to force field it successfully also deciding to place the gateways on the front door making it much more difficult to warp up that ramp and all also mana setting up a pylon here allowing him to warp units onto the low ground and perhaps stop any additional reinforcements if they're trying to come in a probe activating this zonaga watchtower here this is the critical zonaga watchtower as you are able to see a large portion of the map units and leaving this ramp over here and essentially where they are in that path up and down that ramp the the mini map actually looks kind of funny in that you do you um i don't know if you can actually see up onto this high ground it doesn't look like you can does he actually see it? okay he does actually see it the mini map is just darker so it doesn't look like um this part of the map is actually revealed to me anyways zealots and sentries now making their way down as the probe perhaps going to try to set up a proxy pylon somewhere we are getting a robotics facility so it is going to be a three gate with a robotics facility those stalkers now making their way down and if mana this time is able to get into colossi first that would be very very helpful to him as those Colossi are massive units able to break down force fields very easily. Three Stalkers now retreating home as this game continues. P 
probe wise production wise both players want to make sure that they do not over expand and at the same time do not want to make sure that their opponent doesn't have an expansion either oh this one probe gonna get destroyed very easily there down it goes as more stalkers now coming in and this is gonna be a problem for tt1 tt1 actually may lose this stalker and it does take some critical damage but the stalker will be able to return home and at least recapture that zonaga watchtower now mana doing the same exact thing he did in game two of this matchup will be using a warp prism and a warp prism play to drop in zealots along this backside while putting pressure on the front will be fairly successful as a protoss army generally likes to be grouped together as soon as these units are being forced to run back over here and try to deal with the zealot pressure even with a force field on the ramp this set of rocks will just go down and the units may still be able to charge up that ramp very very easily we are getting a chrono boosted immortal out of there and we definitely need more immortals as the warp prism with zealots already underway so this is going to be a nice two prong attack this stalker over here taking one round of attack from a decent number of stalkers and now being forced to pull back and now the zealots are going to be able to come in and get some damage along the backside is he actually going to start um, going into that power mode is a key critical question to be able to warp in stalkers along that backside as well no it looks like he's just going to do a simple drop as the probe, as the observer is still wandering around over here, is taking a look around the map so far. This one particular warp prism um, just hiding off on the side of the map as the stalkers are now in full retreat. So a little curious as to that, as the stalkers are now looking for perhaps a proxy pylon or something else. And that was very important that Namana was able to pull away with that one particular warp prism. A lot of units on the front door there as the observer is going to get shot down down it goes so no more sight onto that high ground we are looking at the natural expansions on the high ground nothing just quite yet we are going into a robotics facility and a colossus already being trained by tt1 now being chrono boosted it looks like it will be chrono boosted about two times lowering the production time from 75 seconds to 55 and then perhaps we will have a timing push. So the Zealots are going to be important. The Immortals only with a range of 5. Also going to be very important as well. As they're going to try to damage as many of those Stalkers as possible. The Stalkers are leading the way since they do move a little bit more quickly. One probe over here apparently not watching the Zelnaga Watchtower. And realizes that it will get shut down in just a moment. And down it goes. And it, does, and it looks like TT1 deciding to pull back. As the Zealots are now just running around on the inside of the space. Workers killed already at 5. As now Mana just um, getting a lot of damage onto that Nexus. This one Colossus though. Going to be more than enough to get a lot of damage onto those Zealots there. One Zealot being left. Um, one Zealot left behind by um, TT1 there as now once again being dropped down and that is a bit of an issue as those Zealots are dancing around back and forth the Warp Prism now trying to just fly away and will be able to successfully escape with three of those cargo in tow. Stalkers, Immortals, and Zealots currently perhaps trying to do a little bit more pressure on the front door. This is a really large game of tug of war trying to distract your opponent so far. Uh, income wise 30 harvesters so tt1 still has a slight advantage but also we can see that there is a nexus up here on the high ground as well so as soon as mana gets this nexus up and running he will have a si significant economic advantage as he will be able to harvest from more mineral patches and also be able to use more chrono boost one observer just positioned in a very nice location only one colossus here so that is going to be an issue as the stalkers now coming in and very nice blink micro coming in from mana so mana with that blink micro will be able to kite many units very very easily trying to kite those units there you go blinking back once more and army wise we can see army supply is pretty even and now 3600 versus 3575 tt1 has to be very careful there's a glitched out colossus over here and if he engages without that colossus that would be absolutely devastating and there you go tt1 being forced to pull back this colossus just in a really really bad location there and now suffering horrible casualties in this fight the stalkers are now pushing their way through there is one colossus and one immortal as the stalkers now blink to get a really decent surround and i think that early glitch right there was the beginning of the end and you hate to see a map with a shrubbery causing the issue here but the immortals and the guardian shields completely able to take it over and I think Mana just had a better unit combination in that particular battle. And with those Immortals, even though they only have a range of 5, five because those Colossi do not have the extended Thermal Lance range, 
those immortals are able to get within combat range very easily and shut down that colossus um, i still believe that if this colossus um, was part of the battle over here and able to get in perhaps five to seven rounds of attack with that splash damage something very very um this battle would not have been nearly as one-sided but tt1 you have to keep track of your units making sure that your protoss ball is not separated and how can you forget a unit like a Colossus? That Colossus is so apparent and so critical. And by losing it that early, or not having it involved in your battle that early, that just really tipped the scales in favor of Mana. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay between Mouse, Mana, and TT1. If you guys have... If you guys um, do not want to know, I'm about to announce the total scores now. Um, so yeah, spoiler alert. If you guys haven't seen... Some of the other games so far, two best of two best of three matches have been completed, and now Mouse Sports has a two and zero record compared to Fnatic's zero and two. We'll see if Sen will be able to and come back and try to even up and, or at least try to put something in the win column here. These games will be played. Keep track of my Twitter feed. Keep track of my Facebook. I also will be updating Team Liquid's feeds as well. I don't have a dedicated time to do any of my live streams just because. I'm a father who has to do emergency pickups from daycare sometimes. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay and this best of three series between Mana and TT1.